Activation synthesis theory is a scientific explanation of why people dream, proposed by J. Allen Hobson and Robert McCarley in 1977. According to this theory, dreams result from random neural activity in the brain during rapid eye movement, EREM sleep. The brainstem sends electrical signals to the cerebral cortex, which is responsible for higher level thinking. Since these signals are random, the brain tries to make sense of them by creating a story, leading to the strange and often illogical nature of dreams. Instead of dreams having deep hidden meanings, this theory suggests they are simply the brain's way of interpreting random activity. Now let's look at some examples of how this theory applies to dreams. One example of activation synthesis in action is when someone dreams about flying after spending the day watching birds. The brain takes recent sensory input and combines it with random neural activity, leading to a dream that feels related to real life but doesn't entirely make sense. Another example is when a person dreams about being chased but cannot identify who or what is after them. This could be the brain responding to a mix of emotional memories and spontaneous nerve signals. Similarly, dreams that shift suddenly from one scene to another, like being in a school and then instantly on a beach, reflect the random nature of neural activation during REM sleep. Now let's look at some strengths of this theory. One strength of activation synthesis. Theory is that it is based on neuroscience, using measurable brain activity to explain why dreams occur. Unlike older theories that rely on personal interpretation, this theory provides a biological explanation for dreaming. Another strength is that it accounts for why dreams are often bizarre and fragmented. Since the brain is working with random signals, the unusual and illogical nature of dreams makes sense. Additionally, this theory helps explain why dreaming is most common during REM sleep, which is when the brain is most active. Research shows that the brainstem plays a key role in dream production, supporting the idea that dreams are a byproduct of neural activity rather than intentional messages from the subconscious. However, this theory also has some weaknesses. One weakness of activation synthesis theory is that it does not fully explain why some dreams seem meaningful. Many people experience dreams that relate closely to their emotions, memories or personal concerns, which suggests that there may be more to dreaming than just random neural activity. Another limitation is that the theory does not explain why people often have recurring dreams or themes that appear repeatedly over time. If dreams were purely random, it would be unlikely for the same dream to happen multiple times. Additionally, the theory does not address why people can sometimes control their dreams, known as lucid dreaming. If dreams were entirely a byproduct of random brain activity, it would be difficult to explain how individuals can consciously change their dream experiences. Now let's explore some alternative explanations for why people dream. One alternative to activation synthesis theory is the continuity hypothesis, which suggests that dreams reflect a person's waking thoughts and experiences. According to this view, dreams are not random, but are influenced by daily life and emotions. Another alternative is the threat simulation theory, which proposes that dreaming helps people mentally prepare for real-life dangers by simulating threatening situations. This could explain why people often dream about being chased or facing difficult challenges. A third alternative is the memory consolidation theory, which suggests that dreaming plays a role in organising and strengthening memories. Research has shown that the brain processes and stores information during sleep, supporting the idea that dreams may help with learning and problem solving. While activation synthesis theory provides a strong biological explanation, these alternatives suggest that dreams may have deeper psychological and cognitive functions.